So we're going to talk today about the power of investing in dividend stocks. A little bit different. If you are in cryptocurrency and you're looking for a place to put some profit, dividends, in my opinion, not financial advice, of course, isn't a bad place to put it. It's certainly better than putting it in your bank and leaving it in your bank for it to potentially rot away with the ever increasing rate of inflation. So today's video, we're going to go over the basics of Pepsi. Talk about that as an example where you can get all your paid information from, where you can get all your free information from, how the charts actually look, and more importantly, why compounding is so, so important. So on the screen, hello, the distribution of corporate profits going down to you, the shareholder, right? If you've bought the share, guess what? You're going to get paid in it. I'm going to explain how it all works, right? So I'm going to go over and show you a website called Simply Safe Dividends, right? This is what I use. It's not a paid advertisement, it's just what I use. I like to recommend this because it's pretty good, right? And ultimately, this gives you the most, I think, the most up-to-date, concise information for you to see dividend stocks at a quick glance. We're going to go through this. We're going to go through some paid, uh, for some other free stuff, sorry, and you'll go through that. But this one is a paid for only. So when you look at this, we're going to use Pepsi. Pepsi is a really, really good example of a pretty okay um, dividend stock, really. You've probably all heard of it, would you believe? So... What it gives you, it gives you the dividend yield, how much you are basically making over the course of the time frame that you're going to be holding it. So in terms of the cost acquisition of the stock and what the yield is of that dividend, in terms of is it a good or is it a bad one? Some of them are like less than 1%, some of them are over like 10%. Realistically, you want to try and go for something more steady, in my opinion. Dividend safety stock, um, s s dividend safety score, sorry. That is essentially, right? Are they at risk? Are they at risk of cutting them? And that is a thing. The one thing that will stop you from getting paid if you are buying into a stock that essentially can get cut due to poor performance, management disagreements and changeovers and changing of how they're going to restructure their dividend program, all kinds of variables which you ultimately cannot control. The growth. How much is it growing? You can see that the dividend growth over the course of the last year with Pepsi is 7%. It's growing quite a lot. And that's kind of in keeping with inflation a little bit too. And you can see obviously the price, the market capitalization of it, and obviously the beta, which is important, right? So going down, you can see here information. What Pepsi is, who they own, why maybe you should be buying it sort of thing. A little bit of fundamentals, right? A little bit of due diligence. But this is where the key metrics come in when you scroll down the payout ratio, how much percentage is going from the profits into your pocket. Sometimes companies have a much lower payout because they want to reinvest in their company to make it better. Some don't. And Pepsi are one of those ones that actually offer quite a lot to the shareholders, which is relatively good. You can see as well, 49 years, 49 years, boys and girls, that this has done a streak of dividends, right? So it has not failed at one point in the last 49 years, which is mental. It has also increased dividends in a re recession for obvious reasons. It is a food manufacturer. It's a drink producer. Guess what? We need those, right? And you can see here, return on recession, not too bad, minus 35%. So in reality, it actually beat the S&P 500. Pretty cool, right? So again, that's a dividend growth. Over the last 20 years, it's got a fast dividend growth of 11% per year. Pretty good. How do you get paid though, right? This is where it gets interesting. Quarterly, right? It tells you here quarterly. Per share, you get $4.60, okay? So obviously you can see the price is $170 per share, and guess what, do the maths. You get your payment date, so on the 30th of June, you're gonna be getting paid, basically. So roughly just happened, the payment date of the last quarter, and you can see here very much how they get paid and how it's increasing over time too. But there you go, that's the simpleness of it, right? That is the simpleness of that using a good platform, but obviously if you wanna look elsewhere, you can look elsewhere, which is why these free options are pretty good. So Seeking Alpha, great website, love to use it myself. Gives you the same information, right? Just go on to obviously the ticker, Pepsi, go to dividends and you can go through it. So you can see the safety score, you can see the growth, the yield, all kinds of good stuff. You know, reality is most of the data is pretty much the same, but it gives you an idea, right? Again, if you wanna go elsewhere, you can look at Yahoo. Yahoo is a great website. It doesn't give you much in terms of dividend information apart from on the front page here, but in reality, you can look and see what is actually happening over the course of you know, all the, the financial information, the details and the financials. You can also find out as well on this website, which is pretty cool, who is holding it. And I mentioned at the start of this video, I get paid off a lot of dividend stocks. 
i.e. index funds. So there you can see the top index funds here. Some of these will pay out dividends, some of them don't, so make sure you understand that. And if you're buying a basket of things, guess what? More than likely you are gonna get paid in dividends. So if they're holding the likes of Apple, you know, Pepsi, Costco, whatever it may be, and they've got their dividend set to distribute to you, in them index funds, you will get paid too. So you can see here who the top individuals are and obviously the top mutual funds. So let's talk about other dividend stocks, how to find them, why you should be looking at certain things and different metrics, right? For me, I find dividend stocks relatively safe, right? Personal opinion, right? So on Simply Safe Dividends, you can essentially set a screener. So for me, you can, this is a default one, but you, you can change this if you so wish to, right? You can make it to show all kinds of different variables so you can only find certain things. So for example here, you may wanna change the dividend streak to 20 years and it will give you less companies for obvious reasons, right? You may wanna have it as pretty much the safe or the safest option, the yield at a certain point. So these are 58 companies that have been paying their dividend for over 20 years and they've also had a growth, growth streak of 10 years or more, making them relatively safe in my opinion, right? So unless you're buying something that's totally just gonna to go crazy and you've kind of obviously seen that in terms of the narrative of the economy right now, most of these will be pretty good. Most of these are really good companies that you've probably heard of. So for example here, Kimberly Clark, you've probably heard of that company. Not a bad one in reality. Growth is a little bit slow, but it's still growing, right? That's the most important thing. There's all kinds out here you can see. Um, other ones, 3M relatively well-known company you've probably heard of them again in the industrial what about utilities everyone needs water you get the picture cool so it makes it relatively straightforward chevron energy energy is going to be a little bit different over the next coming years with the rise of energy of um, electric cars and stuff like that so that's going to be really really important but again looking at it decent dividend yield it's safe it's got a really good growth its price is relatively okay, as in it's not massively overvalued. And you can see that here in terms of the data, it's telling you that it's it's not too bad. Realistically, you can see that very, very clearly that this isn't really a bad place to be in terms of overall metrics. So there you go, helps you, right? Majorly, majorly helps you. But how do you track it? Well, this website and these other websites as well, also on your stock market broker, if you're looking to buy and stuff like that, will tell you all the data you need in terms of how many stocks you have, how much you reasonably get paid and stuff like that, which makes much more sense. But on this, I find it really, really simple in terms of how it you know displays the data. This gives you, this is just a, a dummy portfolio, by the way, but it gives you the metrics. It gives you the understanding of what you need to know. So you can see in your portfolio how the growth's been doing. As you can see, it's not too bad. Realistically, pretty slow, but look at the economy. Hmm. Not too bad, right? So when we're looking at that, that's an important thing. Diversification. You don't want to be, as we all know in investing, you don't want to go two balls deep in one. Some you may well have more than others, but in reality, that is your diversification, right? The one thing though that we do need to talk about more than anything is your income. When are you going to get paid? Cool, right? You've got a calendar of when you will get paid, which is pretty awesome. If you put that over the course of the year, you can see per month what you're going to get paid. As you can see here, this is not a quick rich program. This is a very, very simple. This takes time. Time is a big, big thing in the market of investing. And one thing you should only pay attention to is how long have you got. So start early, keep going. That's kind of the, the mindset you need to be in. And finally, let's talk about the element of the forecast, right? The income forecast is huge, right? So the hidden thing with all things considered with dividends and the main thing about the power of investing is all about the compounding. You are getting paid in cash, whether that's every month or every quarter, depending on your stock, right? Most of the time it is that. That cash can then be reutilized and reused. Guess what? If you turn on the reinvestment of the dividends, you are going to instantly get a boost anyways because you're going to automatically put it in and you can see here how much are you going to annually put in per you know on your year let's just say ten thousand dollars right for me not a bad little amount and you can see already how in your scenario here you can see the growth of your account going up and up and up and that is based off this portfolio by the way so you may have a more aggressive portfolio you may have not it may not and this is you managing it and you can see here over the course of that time period so if you are getting a 5.8 percent return the amount of money that that is going to continuously go up is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger all of a sudden 
you're getting two, three, four thousand pound extra a year in your balance going into more stocks and that's going to increase even more increase even more increase and that is not including value appreciation of individual stocks as well you may well find that you buy something relatively low and it goes up in value as well you can sell that still get paid a dividend over the course of that previous quarter and guess what you can rebuy back a bit lower and get more units i.e more stocks and get paid more in the future it's just the way the marketplace so how do these stocks look so just to give you an idea this is what pepsi looks like and you've probably noticed already it doesn't move much right they don't move as bad as you think now when we look at the fact of what has happened over the course of this time period here the s p 500 the nasdaq and stuff have dropped 21 25 percent give or take in both retrospects right pepsi hasn't dropped much at all just to give you an example this is what costco looks like versus obviously pepsi they do drop in price but ultimately they don't drop much right in the grand scheme this is not like cryptocurrency this is not like growth stocks they do have a much underlying foundation which is Basically, a lot of people wanted to buy them, hold them, and basically keep the money. Let's look at a few others. Let's look at Coca-Cola. Not too bad. Again, the beverage world isn't doing too bad in reality versus, um, obviously, that, that and Pepsi. If we're going to look at the likes of Apple, probably going to do a little bit worse because it is technology stock, but ultimately, not too shabby. We're not talking here of death and destruction. These do hold their values pretty well, but you can see over the course of time, yeah, Maybe not the time to invest in some of these. Maybe you might be looking for a bigger pullback in certain assets, in my opinion. I think that would be a great and a wise thing to do. But for a lot of people, this may be opening up a avenue, a doorway into something a little bit different. So that is a simple lines of it, the power of dividend stocks. They hold the value pretty well. You get paid in cash per quarter or per month, depending on what you're buying. But the most important thing you can compound it. If you, even if they are having a terrible year in value or a ter terrible sort of situation, most of these companies, if you are setting it up correctly and you are doing your research, will pay you if you're looking for companies that are genuinely paying over the course of decades and they've never failed to do so, even throughout recessions. So it's important, right? You just gotta build it up. Yeah.